Hey all, here OS Reviews. The concept of continuity has long been a pipe dream in many of our hearts, and for those unfamiliar, it means you can use one device, say a phone, and it could transform into a laptop, a tablet, other form factors acting as the brains. Other devices are just shells and reduce duplication of having to install the same software, of having to sign into multiple devices all at once. Well, a decade ago, Motorola first played around with this idea using their Atrix smartphone. It was the world's first dual-core Android smartphone, and it also came with an optional lap dock accessory where you could pop the phone into the top compartment, and then you are able to transform that Android experience into a pseudo laptop. In fact, it even came with a desktop-style launcher, a desktop-class Firefox browser. Sadly, this technology wasn't ready for mainstream. It was still underpowered compared to conventional laptops. Well, a decade later and things have definitely changed. These days, flagship great smartphones, powered by the newest silicon, are now able to deliver an experience that's not too far off from most entry to mid-tier laptops when it comes to raw horsepower at least. So now it makes more sense to explore a concept like a lap dock, in my opinion, and that is exactly what we're taking a look at today. For this particular model, it is also a touchscreen and has a 360 degree hinge, so you can actually flex it into a tablet mode if you wanted to, and has a pretty comfortable keyboard which is also backlit, and has again pretty slim bezels, so the design here does look quite sleek, having a 1080p IPS LCD panel. So ultimately, although it's best suited for a smartphone that has a desktop mode from various manufacturers, it can also act as a regular external or portable monitor, compatible with any device that supports video output. So inside the packaging here, it's quite similar to what you'll see in a laptop in terms of presentation. Some extra accessories in here include a quick user guide, power supply for charging the, again, 10,800 milliamp hour built-in battery using USB Type-C, mini to full-sized HDMI cable as an added bonus. It is worth mentioning though, the touchscreen capability can only be unlocked using USB, such as USB Type-C. So this is only gonna supply video input which, speaking of, there is also a braided Type-C to Type-C cable that is included. Taking a closer look at the design, there is a screen protector on the front that we can peel off, but right now it's labeling all the different ports, including a dedicated power key that you can press to turn on the lap dock. You can turn it off to conserve on power. There is also a micro SD card reader along with the first Type-C port that's meant just for charging. There's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, although there are built-in four speakers on the laptop, which is is pretty neat. The other side features the USB Type-C port, which is for video mirroring, and we also have on the side here the aforementioned micro HDMI. It's super slim, well built out of metal, however it doesn't have the most I.O. in the world. I would have liked them to see maybe incorporate a second Type-C video input or even another Type-A full-size USB slot, but overall it still does the trick. The back of the unit is also made out of metal, so very good build, similar to a MacBook or a Surface laptop, and we have some soft touch rubber feet. And let's also peel off this film that removes that glossy layer and gives us just a very clean matte surface, everything brushed aluminum, feels comfortable and relatively lightweight for a 14 inch unit. Now, this does not necessarily open with one hand as you can see there, a bit stiff in order to support the device at different angles without wobbling. Now taking a closer look, it is a very comfortable layout since there isn't a dedicated numpad and it is stretching a relatively full-sized 14 inch size. So the keys are quite large, have pretty good depth of travel, and they don't feel cheap or tacky at all. There's a little bit of a bow to each of the keys, so as you are typing along, it's actually a pretty satisfying experience and you're able to get a reasonable typing speed for essays and documents. Not bad at all. One thing I will say though is the inside of the laptop is made out of a polycarbonate plastic as opposed to full aluminum. So the metal there is on the top, the bottom, and the sides, but it stops on the palm rest area, which is still fine considering it doesn't flex too much even if you're pressing down and it's not as cold when you're resting your hands on it. So overall feels good. Trackpad is also a decent size, supports multi-touch gestures, and overall the bottom portion here presses down with a satisfying click action. We have the speaker grills, and then there's just the beautiful 14 inch 
IPS display, which as aforementioned can lie completely flat, in fact even past this extent, 360 degrees like a tablet, for presentation purposes, uh, or if you're connected to a regular laptop and you don't need the extra keyboard, or you can fold it completely shut like this and use it like a tablet. And I can drag with two fingers on the display over here to open up the control center for navigating the settings of the monitor, such as the volume of the built-in speakers, as well as the screen brightness. This is at the minimum setting, but I can crank it all the way up. And you can also take a look at the battery percentage remaining. Going over to the second page, we can also choose between the sRGB values in terms of the red, green, and blue balance. And if you aren't satisfied with those properties, you are able to adjust it yourself to a cooler uh, or a warmer color, depending on your preferences. And voila, we've entered a desktop mode here on an LG smartphone. In case your device doesn't have a desktop mode though, you can also just go into a regular mirroring mode, as you can see. That's not quite as fun in my opinion, but you are able to still see everything on a larger canvas. Overall, it's a pretty good panel, even with a bit of background lighting, it still remains visible without too many issues. We can also tell down below here that the keyboard is indeed backlit. Makes it also pretty nice to type on in darker spaces, although you don't get a ton of adjustments in terms of the brightness controls here, but tapping on function and then the keyboard key here will allow you to turn this either on or off. Overall though, still really nice to find as an added, more premium touch in my opinion. There's also some shortcuts on the very top row that allow you to control things like volume, as well as the screen brightness at a single click so that you don't have to necessarily go into the advanced settings if you want to just adjust some of those quick properties. It will charge your phone at the same time while it's being docked, which is pretty neat, so it doesn't have to eat up the juice on your phone's battery for instance. Great, and again, an entire experience here with the lap dock will last for around seven hours hours on a full charge, so similar to a Chromebook or really any ultra portable these days, relatively average there. The experience here brings back memories of the aforementioned Motorola Atrix, but on a more powerful CPU, everything just loads up more quickly, and it just really feels like you are using a Chromebook or even Windows laptop. Of course, you can also interact with the touchscreen by pinching in and out for zooming around. Everything again looks quite sharp and beautiful on the screen. So I can tap on different links, view back web pages with ease, and again, everything loads back, of course, much faster than on the Atrix from 10 years ago. So if all you're doing is just reading back articles, browsing the web, using services like Google Docs, honestly, there's not going to be a huge difference anymore uh, in terms of what this thing can do versus a dedicated device. With that being said, of course, this is still connected to your phone at the end of the day. So if you expect to do a lot of intensive, let's say, video editing, then of course that's not going to be the best use case. However, you can also install certain remote desktop tools and you're able to connect, say, into a Windows environment as long as it's connected over Wi-Fi. However, the only thing would be, again, that device that kind of dangles off to the side. So if you have a desk space here to accommodate it, it works perfectly fine. But if it really is working on your lap, for example, well, the phone is also going to require a little bit of space uh, for it to still dock there on the edge. Plus, one thing to keep in mind is if you are doing things like video conferencing, that's still one limitation at the moment since there is no built-in webcam. You would need some sort of dock that can mount the phone on the side of your laptop, uh, which is something that we have reviewed in the past. There are companies bring out certain models which support docking magnetically and charging at the side of a device. So I will include a link to that in the description if you're curious, though that can partially mitigate that limitation, but it would be nice for this to be built directly into this unit itself. Of course, the actual OS experience will still vary depending on what type of phone you're using. Previously, that was LG, a slightly more barren experience, but still gets you that larger full screen view with a more desktop-like homepage. Uh, Samsung's implementation, though, tends to be a little bit more feature-rich using DeX, where similarly we can pinch in, access a lot of the details here on the text, which looks quite sharp. We can also confirm that it supports the advertised 10 fingers for multi-touch, just by putting our fingers along here, and we see that all of these are being registered. Let's even jump into something like YouTube and take a quick look at how it fares with the built-in speakers.
All right, so some takeaways here would be that even though it is advertised as a quad speaker and gets decent in terms of volume output, at the very least it is coming out from the front, not on the back of the laptop, so it doesn't get covered up or muffled too easily. However, it's not the most full sounding speakers, but overall it does okay in a pinch, and you can always connect to external Bluetooth speakers, headphones, or use your phone speaker instead if you prefer. It's average, I'd say. But more importantly, the display here, as you can tell, is awesome in terms of colors, vividness, everything just really pops for an IPS LCD screen. Definitely one of the better ones that I've seen, and it gets you a pretty immersive experience if you are watching YouTube, Netflix, anything really on a bigger canvas. A couple of additional notes, there is a magnet on here, so if you are closing down the laptop, for example, example, it knows to turn off the keyboard as well as the display to conserve on power. So it is smart enough there, and when you open up the laptop again, it will resume where you less left off. The same thing can be said about the desktop mode on most of these phones are smart enough in that even if you disconnect your phone, what you're doing on the phone itself can be something completely different. And the moment that you plug it back in, it will resume exactly where you left off on this desktop environment. Last but not least, and this one is a little bit trippy, but I have pulled up a slightly older Windows phone that supports Continuum, the same idea of continuity using Type-C, and we have now a pseudo Windows desktop experience on a larger screen, even show up a multitasking drawer here that is very similar to Windows to this day. So quite convincing in that sense, and also a little bit nostalgic and sad, that Windows Phone, of course, is no longer an active OS that we have with us, but this one in particular really just unlocks that full experience of the desktop mode being very different from the smaller phone experience. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Dope Display 14-inch laptop. And I have to say it's a very good modern take on this concept now that more and more phones have some type of desktop mode with more powerful hardware. It's gone to a state where it's overall good enough to replace something like a Chromebook if you don't want to carry around a separate device when it comes to the internals and guts. The build as a lap dock is super solid and it's even fitting I would say of a more premium laptop like experience and ultimately hoping that as these products become more popular more phones having these modes available that perhaps the pricing for these can also come down. You can check out additional details if you are interested in the links down below but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching Kirat OS Reviews.